everyone in this chapter we will write our brdf anisotropic model to show anisotropic specular reflections and i have created a scene in which we have some silverware and the metal surfaces and i have created a material and i have applied a shader which is lighting brdf anisotropic which is an exact copy of ibl shadow glsl with the name change so that i can apply the shader onto the material so let's open an isotropic brdf shader and start modifying it i will also add brdf here so that we know it's a brdf model shader and before we begin modifying this code let's clean up the shader a little bit because we have some comments in here which we can remove at this point. For example, this function has already been moved to CVG lighting. So let's delete that, move this function to CVG lighting as well. So cut it and paste it in here. Indent it properly, save it, save this shader as well. And let's see if we get any compilation error or not. So, so far it's good. And we will remove this comment from here. This as well. Here too. Okay. So we are in good shape to start modifying our shader. In the previous chapter, we saw that there are three properties that we are going to need, NU, NV, and reflection factor. We already have the reflection factor here, which we can use, and we will add two more properties, which are NISO U and NISO V, or NU or NV. But before we begin adding those properties, let's understand how we are going to structure our shader. So, we know that we are going to add the specular reflections in it. And we already have some specular reflection in our shader. So what we are going to do is we will provide different options of specular reflection to the user. So the first option is if they want to completely turn off the specular reflection. Second one, if they want to use specular map, it's an optimization step so that we don't have to sample a texture if we are not using specular map. And the third option will be specular map off. And the fourth option will be anisotropic specular reflections. So these are the four options that we will provide to the user and we will be using keyword enum for this option. So we will get a drop-down menu using which user will be able to select the option they want. And then we will add two more float properties, NISO U and NISO V. We already have the reflection factor as a property, but we are only using it when the IBL mode is on. So in this condition, we will add if either IBL reflection mode is on or the specular reflection is set to anisotropic. In both the cases, enable this property because we are going to need it in the shader code. So now let's get back to our shader and start editing it. So here are our properties of specularity. We are defining a map here, specular factor and specular power, which we used in our Blin-Fong specular equation. Right after that, to keep all the specular properties all together, we will start adding anisotropic specular properties. First thing we are going to need is keyword. First option will be off. Second option, if we are going to use a map. Third option, there is no map. And the fourth option is anisotropic reflections. We will call this property specular and the label will be specular mode. It will be a float property and by default we want to use a map. Then because we want to provide a way of using tangent maps to define the tangents of the mesh, we will use a map which we will call tangent map 
the label will be tangent map it will be a 2d texture by default it will be black then we will add second property which is n iso u the label will be n iso space u 